Hi everyone. In the previous class, I explained to you what is hemostasis, how bleeding was arrested by various mechanisms, vasoconstriction, role of platelets in vasoconstriction, role of platelets in formation of platelet plug, and also role of platelets in activation of clotting factors and formation of fibrin meshwork, formation of clot in the arrest of bleeding. Today, I'll be explaining you how the blood is kept in fluid state normally and why the clot is not formed within the circulation normally and if at all the clot that is formed how this clot is broken down into smaller fragments and keep the blood in fluid state so to summarize the formation of clot the activated platelets will activate the contact factor factor 12 this is by the intrinsic pathway or contact activation pathway. Once the factor 12 is activated over the activated platelets, why these platelets were activated? Platelets which are in inactive state in circulation will get activated only when they come in contact with the injured vessel wall collagen or the von Willebrand factor of the subendothelial connective tissue. So when there is injury to the vessel wall, the platelets will bind to the subendothelial collagen or the von Willebrand factor and gets activated and these activated platelets will further activate more and more platelets to form aggregation of platelets and platelet plug and over this activated platelets the coagulation factors are getting activated and fibrin meshwork is formed. So the first factor to be getting activated is the factor 12 on the membrane of the platelets. So once the factor 12 is activated by intrinsic pathway this will activate factor 11 activated factor 11 will activate factor 9 and this factor 9 forms a complex with factor 8 activated factor 8 and calcium and phospholipids this will activate factor 10 so i'll keep it as 12 11 9 10 so once 10 is activated this will form a complex with 5 calcium phospholipids activate factor prothrombin to thrombin the formation of thrombin so thrombin is factor 2a so once thrombin is formed this will convert fibrinogen fibrinogen is factor 1 converted to fibrin so from this point the activated factor 10 is a common pathway for both extrinsic and intrinsic the extrinsic pathway is the tissue factor pathway tissue factor pathway where the tissue factor 3 is getting exposed when there is damage to the vessel walls and this tissue factor 3 will activate factor 7 activated factor 7 can activate 9 or factor 10 and from here is the common pathway so this is the intrinsic pathway activating the factor 10 the extrinsic pathway activating the factor 10 and factor 10 converting the prothrombin to thrombin formation the thrombin will convert the fibrinogen to fibrin monomers and these fibrin monomers are trinodular structures with two d domains in the periphery and small e in the center so these are all actually polypeptide chains there are three polypeptide chains alpha polypeptide chain beta polypeptide chain gamma polypeptide chain and this forms the D portion and also here alpha polypeptide chain, beta polypeptide chain, gamma polypeptide chain. So this forms the D portion. So there are two D and this center portion is the E portion. So this is about the fibrin molecule. So now these fibrin molecules, these will organize like this. This is one fibrin molecule monomer will organize to form a polymer. This is one fibrin thread. Similarly, one more fibrin thread I will draw here. So these are threads. So you can simply draw like this threads. Fibrin threads are formed. And these fibrin threads are like meshwork. They are very loose threads now. These threads have to be stabilized by one more factor that is activated by thrombin that is factor 13, fibrin stabilizing factor. This will act on these fibrin threads to cause cross linkages. So here these domains are cross linked like this by covalent bonds.
and also they cross link these. So now here they are cross linking between the fibrin monomers. This is the fibrin monomer cross linking the fibrin monomers and also they cross link the fibrin strands like this. So now this fibrin meshwork is very strong, stable and it is resistant to any sort of forces. This is a stable fibrin plot. Now let us start with understanding of what are the natural anticoagulants that will prevent formation of clot. The first is if you inactivate the platelets, the platelets if they are inactivated, these factor 12 cannot be activated, right? This factor 12 will get activated only when it binds to the activated platelets. So what are the platelet inactivators now? Prostacyclin. nitric oxide. So, prostacyclin is PGI2. Prostacyclin and nitric oxide will inactivate the platelets. So, if the platelets are inactivated, the contact factor cannot be activated and the coagulation cascade does not continue, the fibrin formation is inhibited. So, these prostacyclins and nitric oxides are anticoagulants. These are secreted from the endothelial cells. We consider this is the endothelial cell. This endothelial cell will secrete this prostacyclin, nitric oxide. These two will act on the platelets. Consider this is a platelet. The prostacyclin will act on the platelet. This nitric oxide will act on the platelets and the platelets is inactivated. If the platelet is inactivated, factor 12 will not be activated. Factor 12 is not activated and the coagulation cascade will not be continuing. The second is antithrombin antithrombin is a protein molecule that is acting against the thrombin so this antithrombin consider this is an antithrombin this antithrombin can bind to this thrombin so this is thrombin thrombin is activated factor 2 2a and this is AT, antithrombin. So, once the antithrombin binds to thrombin, this thrombin is inactivated, it is inactivated. So, once the thrombin is inactivated, the fibrinogen cannot be converted to fibrin. If the fibrin is not formed, the clot is not formed. So, this antithrombin acts as an anticoagulant that is inactivating the thrombin. And also, this antithrombin can bind to one more clotting factor. So, we can keep it as factor 10A. So, this factor 10, this activated factor 10 will cause formation of thrombin and fibrin clot formation. If this 10A is inhibited, if the, this 10A is inhibited, the clot formation is also not happening. So, this is by antithrombin. The antithrombin inhibits 10A antithrombin inhibits the thrombin. From where this antithrombin is secreted? This is a protein molecule present in circulation. This antithrombin is secreted by the liver cells mainly, protein secreted from the liver cells. This antithrombin can also be accelerated. The effect of antithrombin can also be accelerated by the presence of circulating anticoagulant heparin. Consider this is heparin. So, I will keep it as third, heparin. Heparin is secreted from the which cell is this? In circulation, the heparin is secreted from a basophil and also in connective tissue, the mast cells. The basophils and mast cells will secrete heparin. Heparin is polysaccharide, it is a carbohydrate moiety, this will form a complex with this antithrombin. So, this heparin will bind to antithrombin and this heparin will activate this antithrombin and accelerates its effect. So, this antithrombin bound to heparin can bind to either 
the thrombin or it can bind to the two coagulation factors 10a and inhibit these two so heparin by indirect action accelerating the effect of antithrombin will inhibit the thrombin and 10a so heparin acts as an anticoagulant also the endothelial cells will secrete the heparin sulfates so this is the heparin sulfate secreted by the endothelial cells these also act as circulating heparin by binding to antithrombin and suppressing the or inhibiting the thrombin so this is heparin sulfate secreted by endothelial cells this heparin sulfate binds to the antithrombin this antithrombin inhibits the thrombin 2a by binding to 2a and it inhibits the 2a and also 10a 2a and 10a are inhibited so heparin and heparin sulfate are anticoagulants heparin is secreted from the basophils mast cells and heparin sulfate is a molecule that is secreted from the endothelial cells now fourth thrombomodulin what is this thrombomodulin thrombomodulin is the receptor protein present over the membrane of endothelial cells i'll explain here so this is the endothelial cell there is a transmembrane protein thrombomodulin like this with its binding site for thrombin this is what thrombomodulin this thrombomodulin can bind to the thrombin what is this thrombin thrombin is 2a if this endothelial cell expresses a, a protein molecule thrombomodulin and this thrombomodulin binds to thrombin forms a complex we call it as thrombin thrombomodulin complex what happens to the thrombin in circulation the thrombin in circulation will be reduced because this thrombin is picked up from the circulation and this is taken out of the circulation and forms a complex so the thrombin effect on the fibrinogen is no more and this thrombin cannot activate the factor 5 thrombin cannot activate factor 8 anymore it cannot convert the fibrinogen to fibrin anymore so this thrombomodulin will search for the thrombin and it takes out the thrombin from the circulation so this thrombomodulin will remove the thrombin from the circulation so once the thrombin is removed out of circulation this thrombin cannot activate fibrinogen to fibrin and clot formation is inhibited so this thrombomodulin is also acting as like anticoagulant molecule that is membrane protein the endothelial cell transmembrane protein thrombomodulin it is acting like a receptor binding to thrombin and thrombin is removed from the circulation there is one more protein over the endothelial cell this protein is acting like a receptor to bind one more molecule which is present in circulation that is secreted from the liver this molecule is C, protein C. This molecule is protein C. This molecule protein C is expressed to thrombin thrombomodulin complex by this receptor. So, this protein C, which is in inactive form, when it is bound to this thrombin thrombomodulin complex, we can call it as thrombin thrombomodulin complex will activate this complex will activate protein c 
So this protein C is activated now. So what is the role of this protein C? This protein C will inactivate the factor 5, factor 8, which was activated by thrombin. So factor 5, activated factor 5, activated factor 8 are inactivated by protein C. And for this action, it requires one more protein as a cofactor, protein S. So protein S is also a protein substance secreted from the liver in circulation. It is acting like a cofactor. Cofactor. So this is activated protein C, APC. APC is activated protein C. This protein C is getting activated by thrombin thrombomodulin complex. The thrombin thrombomodulin complex will activate the protein C and the role of this protein C is to inactivate the factor 5, factor 8. These were activated by thrombin. See here, this thrombin which activated factor 5 and factor 8 now forming a complex with thrombomodulin and inactivating the factor 5 and 8 by taking the help of protein C. Thrombin is itself an activator for 5 and 8. The thrombin activating the factor C is inactivating the 5 and 8 and the protein S is the cofactor in inactivating 5 and 8. So these along with thrombomodulin, protein C and protein S are acting as anticoagulants inactivating the clotting factors prevention of clot formation or acceleration of formation of clot. Now sixth is tissue factor pathway inhibitor. So what is this substance? This substance is secreted from the endothelial cells. This will inhibit this tissue factor pathway. I will write it here. Tissue factor pathway inhibitor will act on this complex. The factor 3 tissue factor, factor 7, activated factor 7 and there is calcium also here. So this is a complex. This will inhibit this complex. So now factor 7 is inhibited, factor 7 is inhibited. So once the factor 7 is inhibited, this cannot activate factor 10, factor 9 and the clot formation is suppressed or inhibited. By this tissue factor pathway inhibitor, this molecule is inhibiting the extrinsic pathway, tissue factor pathway. So that is the sixth tissue factor pathway inhibitor secreted from the endothelial cells. So this is all about the anticoagulants which are present normally. These are all natural anticoagulants. That is how they keep check of the blood viscosity and they prevent the clot formation, inhibiting the platelets activation, inhibiting the activated clotting factors. So to summarize, the prostacyclin nitric oxide secreted from the endothelial cells will inactivate the platelets. Once the platelets are inactivated, the coagulation cascade cannot continue in formation of clot. The factor 12 cannot be activated. This antithrombin is a substance protein molecule secreted from the liver and this antithrombin will inhibit the thrombin and factor 10A. The antithrombin effects are accelerated by heparin and heparin sulfate. Heparin is secreted from the mast cells and basophils. It is an anticoagulant. It acts on the antithrombin to inhibit thrombin and 10A. The heparin sulfate is secreted from the endothelial cells. This heparin sulfate will act on antithrombin accelerating its effect in inhibiting the factor 10 and thrombin. The thrombomodulin is the receptor protein present over the endothelial cells. The thrombomodulin forms a complex with thrombin. The thrombin is released from the circulation that is taken out from the circulation. The thrombin levels in the circulation decreases. The thrombin, if there is no thrombin in the circulation, the fibrinogen cannot be converted to fibrin clot. And also this thrombin thrombomodulin complex will activate the inactive protein C which is secreted from the liver in circulation. This protein C which is in circulation will be activated by this thrombin thrombomodulin complex. This activated protein C along with the cofactor protein S which is also secreted from the liver cells in circulation now. This activated protein C along with the cofactor S will inhibit those clotting factors which were activated by thrombin that is 5 and 8. So this is how this thrombin which activated the 5 and 8 for clot formation will also form a complex with thrombomodulin activates the protein C and inhibits those 5 and 8. So thrombin is activator and also inhibitor by for 5 and 8. 
This is all about protein C and protein S role. The lastly, the tissue factor pathway inhibitor is a protein substance that is secreted from the endothelial cells. This tissue factor pathway inhibitor will block the effect of the factor 7 and the factor 10 or factor 9 cannot be activated. The extrinsic pathway is blocked. So these are all the natural anticoagulants. They prevent the formation of clot. Now you need to understand there are some anticoagulants that will prevent the formation of clot when the blood is taken into the test tube and you add some anticoagulants to prevent clot formation. So heard of sodium citrate, sodium citrate, sodium oxalates and EDTA. So these are all anticoagulants that will prevent the formation of clot. How these acts? these citrates and oxalates will combine with the calcium, this calcium and forming insoluble salts. Calcium citrate and calcium oxalate salts are formed, the calcium is precipitated. This calcium which was supposed to be a cofactor in activation of 10A and formation of thrombin, the clot formation will not happen when citrates and oxalates will bind to the calcium to form calcium citrates, calcium oxalates and also this EDTA will bind to the calcium levels. So the calcium is now bound, there is no free calcium, the calcium cannot act as a cofactor in formation of clot. So these are all calcium sequesters, calcium binders and also chelators. Now the second one is vitamin K antagonist, vitamin K antagonist. See vitamin K has a role in formation of clotting factors in the liver. The clotting factors 2, 7, 9, 10, factor 2, factor 7, factor 9, factor 10 are formed in the liver and vitamin K has a role in formation of these clotting factors. See how these clotting factors are formed, they are basically proteins. Any protein formation is by transcription and translational process. So once the translation has happened, there is something called post translational modifications. So here these proteins are undergoing post translational modification within the liver cells. The post translational modification here is carboxylation of glutamic acid amino acid. So this protein consider this is a protein with the N terminal region, N terminal region is having glutamic acid. So this is the glutamic acid at amino terminal, amino terminal is NH2 region. Now. The carboxyl group has to be added, COO group has to be added to the amino terminal. So this is gamma carboxylation of glutamic acid residues of factor 2, 7, 9, 10 proteins. For this gamma carboxylation of glutamic acid residues, the, the enzyme required is gamma glutamyl carboxylase. And what is the role of vitamin K now? So during gamma carboxylation of these 2, 7, 9, 10, vitamin K is oxidized. So vitamin K is oxidized to form oxidized vitamin K. So this is reduced vitamin K. Reduced vitamin K is undergoing oxidized vitamin K and this precursor protein of 2, 7, 9, 10 are forming a functional protein, 2, 7, 9, 10 and this oxidized vitamin K has to be kept in reduced form. So here there is a reductase, vitamin K reductase, VKOR, this reductase enzyme has to keep the vitamin K in reduced form. So this reduced vitamin K helps in gamma carboxylation of these glutamic acid residues of factor 2, 7, 9, 10 and these 2, 7, 9, 10 are now biologically functional proteins by the role of this vitamin K and other enzymes. So if at all there is some 
substance that will inhibit this vitamin K reductase enzyme like warfarin. Warfarin will inhibit this reductase enzyme, prevents the conversion of oxidized vitamin K to reduced vitamin K and the levels of reduced vitamin K in gamma carboxylation are forming factor 2, 7, 9, 10 is reduced. So, this warfarin is acting like vitamin K antagonist and it inhibits production of factor 2, 7, 9, 10. So, to summarize, vitamin K dependent factors are factor 2, 7, 9, 10. So, these 2, 7, 9, 10 are synthesized in the liver and the final functional protein molecule formation that is carboxylation is happening with the help of vitamin K. So, this vitamin K has to be kept in reduced state. If there is an enzyme inhibitor, to inhibit the action of this enzyme, the vitamin K will not be kept in reduced state and this vitamin K cannot take part in uh, formation of functional 2, 7, 9, 10 uh, coagulation proteins. So, these 2, 7, 9, 10 coagulation proteins will not be biologically functional now and they cannot cause coagulation. So, the coagulation is inhibited when there is decrease in coagulation factors. The coagulation factors 2, 7, 9, 10 production is inhibited by warfarin. I hope you understood the various anticoagulants that are present to prevent the clot formation. In the next class, I will be explaining you how the clot is broken down. If at all there is a clot formed within the circulation that has to be checked, that has to be broken down. How this clot is broken down? If at all this clot is not broken down, this clot can block the smaller capillaries, can cause decrease in the blood supply through the smaller blood vessels and cause ischemia to the cells and the cell will die because of decreased blood flow. The clots have to be broken down. So, this is by a, a special system, we call it as fibrinolytic system or thrombolytic system. I will explain about this in the next class.